Hey, what's up, guys? This is the Couch Classics. Welcome. We're ringing in a brand new year. Well, it's the new year, 2017 in Japan. It's almost here. You guys a have a countdown still. Yeah. So it's the new year in some places. So <laughs> we're ringing in the brand new year with with a topic, great hobby of ours, great interest. We're gonna be talking about birding, birds and birding, and the related so, items. Before you guys immediately click this off and run away, we will be talking about a pretty awesome movie and how we kind of got started in it. It is much more exciting than what you picture in your head right now. Right. So Wait. if you're not sure that you're going to hate this or whatever, just let us roll for a quick couple seconds. Because when my brother told me about this, I was like, you have got to be the biggest nerd in the world. <laughs> what are you going to do? Start looking for bugs next? And within a couple weeks, I was out birding. So... <laughs> Before you automatically knee-jerk reaction, shut this off and leave, watch a few minutes, let it roll, find out what it's about. Because it is a really fun hobby, and it's something that easily rolls into anything else that you're doing. So if you're out camping, or you like to go on walks in the park, or you like hiking, whatever, any of that, birding goes together. Nah. It's not real smooth if you're driving and you're looking for birds. It's a bad combo, like texting and driving yeah, can be lethal. So... <laughs> Definitely but it'll you know, hedge your bets on that one, but definitely blends in with everything else. So any of your outdoorsy stuff that you like to do, you enjoy, birding falls right yeah, into play. Yeah, it it's a natural it. progression. So. so so, the movie we're going to talk about is a movie called The Big Year. Came out a few years ago, 2010, 2011, yeah, something like I'll that. I'll tell you right now. It came out in 2011. I was right. <laughs> I'm usually not that close, but anyway. Yeah, so this movie, Jack Black, Owen Wilson, and Steve Martin are the big guys in there. Got some other characters you'll recognize, several characters you'll recognize, but those are the, the three big guys. And essentially, the premise of the movie is they're trying to see as many species of bird in North America in one calendar year. So, like 12 a.m. January 1st, all the way to 11.59 p.m. on December 31st, they have this time frame to see as many birds as possible. And it's a, it's a national competition. There's competitors, and it's, you know, basically they travel all over the, all over the place trying to see as many birds as they can. And and that's what the premise of the movie is. Within within certain parameters. Yeah. All of North America. So north of the Mexican border, uh, all of the greater 48 states, all of Canada, up through Alaska, not Hawaii. Right. But within 200 miles? Yeah, it's within is that a certain distance. 200 miles off the coast on either side, yeah. east or west. Unless there's an island, a foreign island within that distance, then it's right. halfway between the two. There's a rules. The, the rules are set up by the American Birding Association. So the, the big year standards follow rules set by the American Birding Association. So they determine what's fair game, what isn't fair game. You can't go to the zoo and count birds. You can't. You Which can't is a bummer. Count cat Pet birds, stores are out. Birds, that kind of stuff. But you can count birds that you know, accidentally get blown over in storms from different countries and things like that, so. Anyway, that's kind of the boring stuff. Yeah. The movie lays it out much more eloquently and yeah. more exciting. But the movie follows a rough, based on a true story, roughly. Roughly. <laughs> re re uh, retelling of what happened back in 1998. Yeah. 97, 98, 97, 98, big El Nino storms and stuff, lots of crazy weather. Anyway, the movie follows three main characters in their big year adventures mm -hmm. and how they interact with each other and the uh, different things that happen throughout that year. So pretty yeah. cool. It's, it's awesome. much more exciting and fun. Even if you hate birding and you don't want anything to do with it, you think it's lame, it's a really funny movie. Good it's just good a good comedy. Movie, yeah. I mean, those three guys are hilarious, and mm -hmm. they work really well together. So. Yeah. But, so, uh, for me, I guess what started it is just, it was about this time of year, I decided that, you know, I had birds eating seeds 
on my porch and I decided I wanted to know what they were and I started, you know, trying to learn what the birds were. And then this movie came out and I watch it and I, it opened up a whole new thing. And what appealed to me about it is not only identifying the bird species, but what, they, what they're doing in the movie is making a list. <clears throat> and that channeled right into like my childhood core drives from Pokemon. I mean, there's like, and you still do it with like video game achievements. It's like this achievements. It's the the need to complete, the need to collect. Yeah, exactly. It's a collection, <clears throat> and it's just you can't shake the desire to want to get one more Pokemon <laughs> or unlock the last achievement. And and it's the same thing for me. It's like, you know, you gotta gotta catch them all. But you know, it's in it's the real world Pokemon. You know, it's the it's taxonomy, it's identification and classification of species, and and it just it makes you pay attention to everything. Like you said, when we're when you're out camping or hiking or fishing, anything like that, every sound you hear, every noise, every every little flash of color, of movement, whatever, you pay attention far more than you ever did before. And I guarantee, like you'll walk through the forest slower, and you'll notice everything. Or you'll try and notice everything. It just heightens your senses. And so, yeah. So, and that's the big year that the, the movie's based off of that. And I guess that's basically one extreme of birding. I mean, you don't have to get together and travel and travel all over the continental U.S. and see every bird species, you know, if you want to get into birding. But I guarantee if you do start to get into it, you're going to be like, I wonder if I could afford a big year one day. Man, maybe yeah. I'd like to try it. <laughs> start but, small, like... Like do as many species as you can find in your area. Yeah. Like maybe your town or branch your out to your entire state. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> you know, expand slowly unless you have the money. You know. Yeah. I wish I had the money to just go and travel and put for. I mean, it, it'd be really hard. Yeah. It'd be a rough year. I mean, you have to travel nonstop. Yeah. Anytime there's a rare species, you got to get on a plane and try and see it i mean it'd be very difficult yeah. but if you, if you want to be competitive you got to see all the rare birds and everything like that that just happen to show up and there's a lot yeah. of resources for finding those but i think uh anymore you you got to be looking at i think you can do i mean there's books about people who like a guy who did a big year just by hitchhiking and and bike pedaling and everything like that he kept it pretty affordable but I think the average big year costs somewhere between fifty and seventy five thousand dollars with hotels and and rentals and flights and everything like that going on boat trips right stuff like that so you're looking at a significant amount of money to do a serious like if you wanna to break like the seven hundred species mark you know it's just yeah it's out of control the amount you of money you can spend something. But making a bunch of noise on your end there, brother. I don't know if it's just rattling up against your shirt or something. I don't know. How's that? Better? That's better. Should I take my shirt off? <laughs> yeah, that'll help. <laughs> and it'll get our views up. <laughs> okay. So, no, uh, that's one extreme. I think the least extreme side of birding would be just what you would think of as bird watching. Say so you don't have to know any of the species. I think it would start kind of where I started, where you just see birds and you think, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a cool looking a bird. I enjoy that one. bird. Yeah, or throwing yeah, the the very very simple like going to the park and feeding the ducks. Yeah, you know people enjoy doing that. You know, and it's a simple pleasure of birds in that sense. But mm -hmm. that would be step like stage one. You know, definitely manageable. Not not detrimental to your life in any way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no serious addictions involved. <laughs> and then and then you start working up. I would say to like attracting birds, buying bird feeders water baths, things like that in your yard. And this is what most people think of when they say, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a birder. They think bird watchers, you know, yeah, old sitting. ladies sitting in the yard and watching their birds at the feeders. Yeah. And that's one aspect of it. Yeah. If that's, but if that's that, certainly the lower end. Yeah, you know? If that completes you, that's fine. Um, and then I would say to where I started getting into it when I, uh, you start to want to identify every species that you see. You get a book, some noticed. sort of field guide, and there you know, are several. Yeah, like this one. There's many. Yeah. There's but, different kinds. This one has like actual photographs of the birds, so you have actual pictures of the birds. 
mm-hmm. what they look like in real life. And it has it has identification information in there. It'll have descriptions, range maps, and habitat, and all that kind of stuff like that. Where to where you can try and find them, and and then there's this of, one is just drawings instead of actual photographs. You have drawings. Yeah, what is that? And then lots least? of information about. Or that's a National, National Geographic. Geographic. Yeah, and then in the magical smartphone world, there's there's tons of apps for identifying and identifying birds. So here's like a Sibley's birding app for North America. There's um, this is a National Geographic one, iBird. There's a lot of different applications that make listing and identifying a lot easier. They've also got sounds and calls, so yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different things, factors that different go into resources. actually identifying a specific species. Sometimes it's very close, so you have to listen to the call mm-hmm. and where you're located, the habitat that you're in, yeah. and the colors on the bird and things like that. So you have to get it all together in order to properly identify things. Yeah. So it can get really extreme, but that would be like level three, I guess. Yeah. Where you just, you know, anytime you see something, you'll write it down on your big life list and properly identified or whatever and that's that's where a lot of people fall in a lot of birders yeah fall in and it, and it is a growing hobby a lot of people are doing it more and more people every day and like it, it's becoming more common in conversation so that yeah. when you say oh yeah i'm a birder they go oh okay and that's people kind of yeah. know what you're talking about instead of going yeah the, the truth of the matter is a lot of people lady. are interested <laughs> A lot of people are interested. They'll say, oh, if, you know, I took a picture of this strange bird in my yard. You think you could identify it for me and things like that? And they start to, <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it's not a small hobby anymore. I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar sport, basically. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. a, I mean, especially in the, the eastern United States, I would say it's like kind of where most of it started and spread up, you know, but. I mean, it's there's a lot of money in it. There's a lot, a lot of states will have like an official birding route, like set up through the state. You can buy like a birding trail map that has like all the hot spots throughout the state, and there's it's a there's a good economy out of it because people are traveling to places to see species. So you were just talking about the life list, and so you know to explain that. Whereas like in a big year, you have a calendar year to see as many species. The life list is essentially Every new species you see throughout your lifetime, you write it down. So uh, some people are, are life listers, and they just want to see as many different species as they can before they die, basically. And it goes to some extremes, to uh, what they call big listers, who want to see as many species as they can. And they travel all over the world and try and see like every every bird you know on the planet on the planet which is thousands you know thousands and thousands of birds yeah and then it it can go to like if you want to start listing you know you know i suggest it because it it may help you categorize things help you organize everything but once you start listing then you get that pokemon thing going and (laughs) exactly um you know so for me i do like some smaller things like if i'm going on a trip to a specific birding hotspot for a day with with family or somebody you know i usually do a, a list for the day a day list for something like that a big day a big day whereas a, you know if you can't keep up with if what a big day is after we explained what a big year is then <laughs> i mean i'm not going to slow it down but uh so we could do a big day and just keep a list of of one day's worth of birds but usually what i do is i have my life list going and then every January 1st, I'll start a list for the year just so right. I can keep track of what I've seen that year. And so every time I see a new bird for that year, even if it's not a new one in my lifetime, I write it down. And then, you know, it's a it's our like a mini personal big year kind of thing. But it's fun to compete with people like uh, you and I have usually compare our, our year list, you know. You win this year. (laughs) This year I win because I'm in a different country. But I didn't get out much. You could have easily beat me just in numbers because my numbers weren't really high, but my life birds were a lot higher. Yeah, for sure. Um, But, I mean... And and that's kind of like... The fourth category really is is people who start listing. And 
most of the world, birders will do just kind of a life list. They'll go out and they enjoy looking at birds. Mm-hmm. They'll enjoy li- li- uh, listing them. But there's no competition involved, really. You know, it might be a little competition among friends, but there's no serious competition. In North America, we have the big year, and it's this huge yearly competition where Mm -hmm. people go out there and they try and make your big lists. The big year movie is based on 1998, where a guy named Sandy Comito set the big year record, like all-time highest record, and they thought that it would never get broken. It did. Um, He's actually number two now on the biggest list. Um, they actually like just 2013, last year. 2013, a guy named Neil Hayward beat it by one bird confirmed. So, which is amazing. Yeah. 749 birds in North America is just insane. Yeah. Uh, on average, you can see about 675. Yeah. Anything beyond that is like we talked about before birds that, get blown in from storms from other countries. So yeah, accidental found birds. almost 75 birds from a different country that weren't supposed to be here. That's just mm-hmm. yeah. insane. Because there's just on, there's a little under 700 or so breeding birds in North America, and mm-hmm. everything else is, is extra. So breaking the 700 mark, you know, is huge, phenomenal, you know. And, you know, I think breaking a 500 mark in a life list would be huge. You know, personally, mm-hmm. so because I've been birding now for you know about six or seven years. That's kind of the next and I step. Hit though. that point after you've been listing for a while and you have your area down really good. Mm-hmm. Then you start thinking about, oh, you know, maybe I can go on this vacation and yeah, know, to a specific add area. another fifty or sixty species yeah in a different location, and that that's kind of what we're looking at at this point. Like you start to branch out. Yeah. Add in new areas. <laughs> Take up a job in a foreign country to add to your life list. Right, you know, get a few extra <laughs> birds. <laughs> and, and, I mean, it's just, what it comes down to is just, like, on a on a core level, like, a human, I think that man in general, the human species, I think we kind of have a desire to know what, what surrounds us, you know. We want to identify our surroundings and we get like fulfillment from achieving that. I don't know. It's just like this primal thing that I feel inside of me of like, when I go out, I'm so curious about what it is, you know, and, and it starts with birding and then it branches out to everything else. You know, I've been studying, you know, plants and fungus and insects and things like that. It just like gets out of control. It just, you start to want to, you start to want such a nerd. It's coming from you. (laughs) what i'm not out identifying fungi (laughs) i know but it's just like if you go out in the if you go out it's just for me i just want to know what's there yeah i want to know what it is it's just as simple as that i just want to know what's there and i and listing i think comes naturally with that just to keep keep it organized but birding is is the the main thing for me and and it's very exciting to like like we have climbed to the tops of islands yeah island mountaintops for one bird you know yeah. we've hiked miles and miles and spent entire days just trying to find a single bird right and there's so much enjoyment and fulfillment mm-hmm. when you see that bird yeah i mean you can look at something <laughs> it's, in the it's book awesome and you think about it all the time and it's like man that's such an interesting bird and then when you finally find it you know you go out into the wild and you find a species that's in a book you know, you do your research and you put in the, the footwork and like mm. the exhilaration you get from it. I mean, people live such cooped up lives, you know, there's, there's hardly a reason to leave the house anymore in this day and age. You, you really, you don't have to, if you don't want to, you can yeah, work from home. Yeah, but then you're home, missing out on everything. But, I mean, there's so much out there. Like, you know, there was that time that we went out to that island in the middle of the night and we're calling for owls yep. and you're playing a call on your phone and and then all of a sudden you know the owl just started calling exactly like on the phone and i thought you were still playing it and you're like got this shocked look on your face and i'm just like <laughs> yeah that's, that's it that's it that's it and then we're we running like, through the woods <laughs> we take off and then we finally we see this owl that's about this big you know in the middle of the night and it's just like 
we we had so much excitement and energy you know just setting out to accomplish something and doing it you know it's just like i don't know it's hard to explain and then uh, the like shocking moments like things happen where you're just out wandering around and, you know you'll see other things you'll see bear and deer and everything else as you're out hiking like we were up on the top of a mountain we get into the alpine and we're traipsing around it's pouring down rain because it was always raining in alaska mm-hmm. and we get up there and we're climbing over the hilltop looking for a little ptarmigan you know and it's the same color as everything else in the area <laughs> when they stop moving they disappear because they have masterful alien cloaking device or something <laughs> And we come over this hill and we're like 15 feet away from those sand hill cranes and they just like yeah. pop up and make the goofy call and take off. It was just awesome. Yeah. yeah I mean, but just, that's the stuff you don't expect. And you, you know, I would never see that sitting around yeah, you the, would never experience in my safe it. room. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many experiences and, and like vistas that you see and, and it takes you because this, the species are so diverse. I mean, they inhabit every landmass on the planet. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it matters from one plant to another. You could find a different species. They're so many, right. so diverse and specific to their their niche that, you know, you go into every habitat. You go to every elevation. You know, it matters the distance from the coastline. I mean, it right. all matters. So literally everywhere you go, it could be one side of the street to the other is completely different habitat and there'll be a different bird. You know, it's just, it's so intense and it's, I mean, it's so fulfilling. I, for me, it just, it's addicting because it's just oh, like, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's just, like you said, it's, it's got to come up with one more number on your list. <laughs> just you, one more. You've got that t-shirt that says, he who dies with the biggest <coughs> life list wins or something like that. Right. Oh, it's just, it's awesome. And you know, there's, there's a lot of resources. I think we could probably do a whole episode on, on different applications and stuff that help. But like, there's like basic, a, basic, if you want to get started birding, mm-hmm. watch the big year because yeah. it'll get you all kind of hyped up and excited. Yeah, you'll understand um, better what it is, you know? And get a, a guide. Um, you might get one of the apps like we talked about. You might get yeah. a field guide. These are usually about 15 bucks, And some are better than others, but I know this one you can get like Home Depot or Lowe's. Stokes Field Guide to the Birds is a really good one. Yeah. The National Geographic one is really good. The Sibley's Guide is really good. Um, but get a guide. Start looking through it. I mean, when I first started, I just had it. I always take it with me into the bathroom <laughs> instead of – playing with your phone you know you start looking through that and reading through them and just Mm -hmm. you start to learn all the different species and like if you can break it down into different classes like you know if you look at it and you go okay this is definitely a duck and you look (laughs) at it and you go this is definitely a gull or this is a flycatcher this is a sparrow you can do that then you can figure out what it is from there just by using your app or book or whatever when i was starting out i i went out with my camera and that made it a lot easier because i could see something but I couldn't identify it right away. You snap a picture of it, and then you can bring it up for reference, and you can classify it. You know, if you find a thrush or something like that, you know, it. If you can break it down into those basic units, like you're saying, then it's a lot easier to identify. You can do it later because you may have thirty minutes to stare at a bird through your binoculars, or you may have <laughs> or a couple seconds, a second or two. You know, you'll see something and be like, man, I know it was. You know, okay, what was it? It was sparrow like. You know, mm. was it a warbler? Was it a flycatcher? Was it a sparrow? Was it, you know, and then you can break it down. Like, oh, it had this color and this color. And, you know, we could probably do like a, a, a separate episode on more advanced stuff, you know. But, Absolutely. But I mean, basics, get a the, guide. Yeah. Start learning. Pay attention to the bird, um, you know. Binoculars are Helpful. massive. <laughs> you don't need them to start out. Like, if you're still not sure, because you do have to spend some money, but if you're still not sure, and you got, you know, 15, 20 bucks, you can get a guide, walk around in the parks, look around in your backyard, and start. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can get 15, 20, 30 birds that way pretty easy. Throw out a bag of seed or something like that. And start then, the if you really enjoy it, if you find that you like it, put in some money, get some binoculars, you know. The more you spend, the better you get, unfortunately. Yeah. And I would um, say, go out with, there's 
Yahoo groups. There's people in your area, oh, wherever you yeah, are. Absolutely. There's people there that are birding and that would and love to take you out and help you. You say, I'm completely new. I have no idea a duck from a turtle, you know, then they'll help you out. They'll get you. They'll probably help you. They probably all have a zillion bird books. They might loan you one. You probably yeah. don't need any money at all. They might have old binoculars. Yeah. You probably don't need any money at all at the start. They'll drive you. They'll take you. They'll they'll teach you. You know they love they it. They have they have birding tours set up. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in America, the ABA does tours mm -hmm. consistently, so you can hook up with that group. There's Facebook groups, um, Yahoo groups. Yeah, I mean everywhere you go, there's a birding group. So mm -hmm. check it out. Look it up. It's awesome. And there's and getting the started same. is pretty simple. I mean, getting started, you can go outside and with nothing and just look at birds. Yeah, yeah. But I just I just walked around for five ten minutes outside and got seven species. The first seven for my new year list. Common that means birds. I have to get eight. Yeah, except it's eleven Unfortunately, for me. <laughs> you set the pace, so yeah. But you have a yeah, you do have time to go, you. so. I have to sleep, get some rest, and then I can go out tomorrow. So wherever you're at tomorrow morning when I get up, I'll, I'll text you. I'll find out. All right. Sounds good. If yeah. it's like 100, then I'm out. But. <laughs> well, and that's the thing, you know. At the beginning of the year, you start to get a lot of bird competitions and all the, things like that. All the that, little so. basics. <laughs> yeah. The, the listing of birds in competition form started in America back in the 1800s as a Christmas Day tradition. All the guys would get together, go out, and kill as many like ducks and geese as they possibly could. Yeah. It was called the Christmas Day Bird Count, and they'd kill as many as they can and add it all up. And you know, the man with the most ducks dead at the end of the day won. My theory is that they finally decided to stop because duck doesn't taste very good. Yeah. And what are you gonna do with two hundred ducks? You got to eat duck every day for like months. Yeah. My theory is that was the driving force why they stopped One killing. One dude said, hey, we should just stop shooting them and just count them and see who counts the highest without Yeah, sometime shooting them. in early, early 1900, a guy got together and said, you know, we should stop doing this. He was a member of the Audubon Society. And the Audubon Society, back in the day, went out and killed birds. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was the best way to identify yeah. them and study them. And what eventually converted from basically – Killing birds, you know, at, at the time, bird feathers were huge for women's fashion. So it actually, you know, it, it damaged bird populations hugely all over the world. Oh, yeah. But eventually it, it became to where birds started getting protection and people were counting birds. And, and I think it's just been a steady incline. And nowadays with the, the technology and, you know, the maneuverability and, you know, I just think it's just getting bigger and bigger. And people seem to start to – people care more, I think, about that kind of stuff, you know, care about yeah. habitat and care, care about the species that are that are declining and things like that. And so, like, the greater awareness of that, you know, it's probably a byproduct. And, you know, people are encouraged to go out and just learn about them. And, and being able to connect easily with like-minded people around the world helps a lot. Mm-hmm. That's just increased everything. Yeah. And your skills will get better at first. Like, trust me, it's going to be hard. No, oh, yeah. Like, when you sit down and you're like, what, 700 different birds? What am I going to do? Yeah. But then you can narrow it down to your state. Yeah. Break it down to three or 400. Narrow it down within your state and you're down to, you and know, what time of year it is. 200. Yeah. There's birds so. you can see in the wintertime, you can't see in the summertime, and vice versa. You know, it narrows it down. And then. And then it comes down to breaking it, you know, is it an eagle or is it a Tweety bird of some sort, you know, some sort of sparrow or something. Another it, starling. Yeah. You can, it breaks down quite a bit and you can just use the process of elimination and find out. And then it'll get to the point to where, like the guy that I bird with here all the time, he's got like a magic ear and he just like can drive down the road with a window <laughs> cracked. And he's like, that's a that, that's a that, that's a that, you know, it's just like. That's awesome. You know, and I, I apparently don't have the, you know, I can understand recognize you know a lot of the common ones but he's been birding for like twice as long as i've been alive no not that long but <laughs> over 40 years so he's 180 <laughs> you just develop the skills you he know, invented it, birding 
if you see the flash of a bird, you'll recognize it just from the way that it flies and the shape of its body and yep. the, the pattern. Specific it, so. colors. But, yeah, just just try it, you know. And if, if birds aren't your thing, the same principle applies. If you're interested in something else like wildflowers or trees or something like that, you can do the same thing with everything. It's just basic identification of species, you know. If you want to go out and just look at mammals... <clears throat> Or plants are really easy because they don't fly yeah, away. They don't fly away. You can take your time and identify it. <laughs> you know. That helps. You know, it's just just try it for a little while, and then I'm I promise you that 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 drive inside of you will kick in where you want to just get a few more species, and you'll be going out in the middle of the night, and then before you know it, you'll be making trips across the country or your state to look for a specific bird. You know, and the more you research, trying to break the record. Big yeah. year record, trying to hit that 750 mark. Yeah, you you'll just it just gets out of control. It spirals out of control. So <laughs> it's awesome. So I guess that's what this is our introduction to birding. So in the future, whenever we're in the same country, we are planning on you know taking guys out and and filming some specific trips. There's you know we can we can go to a just a specific wildlife refuge or something like that and show you guys how we bird and and you can experience some of the awesome things, you know, when you see thousands and thousands of geese fly in in the morning, you know. Snow geese. Yeah. Tens of thousands of snow yeah. geese flying over. Or or you, you know, it's just there's experiences that everyone else is missing out on. And you're there, you're out, and you that's yours, you know. It's the same thing here. It's just... There's stuff that I'll never forget that you see when you're out. And it doesn't have to do with birds. You know, I've seen, I'm out and I've seen rare Japanese mammals and things like that that I would have never seen because I would have never been out doing anything. I would have just been sitting here looking at my computer or something. So, yeah. It's awesome. It's the, the real Pokemon. And that's how it started. <laughs> the, real the, dude, life. the dude was just interested in this kind of stuff and it, it grew to making a game out of it and now he's a gozillionaire so yep for sure become interested in something get you outside <laughs> right. because there's so much cool stuff out there yep there is absolutely anyway this is our birding episode in the future we'll have more birding episodes on our birding playlist so if you don't like birding stuff you don't have to watch it you can just be like eh birding meh yeah. Those guys are nerds. We are. And <laughs> Make it's no awesome. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thanks for checking us out. Yeah. <laughs> like, subscribe, comment, do your thing down below and off to the side and and it'll be across YouTube eventually. It'll be like scrolling across with ads and you'll just see us in the background kind of. <laughs> it's gonna happen eventually. In any case, <laughs> thanks for checking us out. Check us out on uh, www.thecouchclassics.com. You can find links to all of our Twitter box and face tabs and all that kind of fun stuff mm, in there. True. Check us out on all of other social media stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, we uh, appreciate it and look forward to a brand new year. So yep. happy new year, guys. Yep. And uh, happy we'll new catch year. you later. Peace.